Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, I review the new 50mm f2 Thipog Eureka lens for the Leica M mount. It pays homage to vintage collapsible lenses and its design is a tribute to the 1950s Taylor Hobson lens. The Shenzhen based company Thipog is the new kid on the block with its name consisting of the English words Thai and Epoch. The company first made headlines when it introduced their line of Simera lenses for the Leica M mount at Photopia Hamburg in 2023, where they introduced this line of lenses that comes with an innovative focusing scale. And for Thipog, this Simera line is basically representing today's Epoch and the new Eureka line that references the famous Archimedes um, exclamation is basically a reference to the last Epoch coming with all sorts of vintage design elements and features. And this particular 50 millimeter F2 lens here is the perfect start for the Eureka line and it even features a small Easter egg that I will discuss in a minute. I took the lens with me on a recent trip to Malta, shooting um, three different rolls of films, so two Delta 100 and one Kodak Portra 160, and I tried to cover a wide variety of different subjects. So I took some portraits, some landscape shots, and even some closer distance um, shots of, for instance, um, plants and other elements in order to really show you how the lens would perform in different situations and give you a better idea of what it is capable of. So let's take a closer look at the build quality, the design of the lens, its features, and most importantly, the results and the images it produces. The 50mm Thipog Eureka lens comes with a collapsible lens design and a beautiful silver vintage look. The pre-production version that I have here is made of brass, the final production version will be made of aluminum. The lens comes with a custom made screw on UV filter and the lens hood in matching colors. Naturally the lens also comes with a front cap and a back cover. Optically, the lens is a pure double gauss design with six elements in four groups and one high refractive index glass and one extra low dispersion glass. The lens comes with 12 aperture blades ranging from f2 to f16. And interestingly, the aperture can be set staplessly, so just like on a cinema lens. The lens features a classic focusing tab with infinity lock and a minimum focusing distance of one meter. In a collapsed state, the lens is only 27 millimeters long, so quite compact, and in the expanded states, it's 41.2 millimeters. All control elements are machined to high standards, and the typographic elements and the engravings provide really good contrast and legibility, in my opinion. The lens even features a little Easter egg um, that references the surrealist painting La Trahison des Images by René Magritte with a small engraving reading Ce n'est pas un objectif that is only visible when you collapse the lens and of course you detach it from the camera. Um, while the most common interpretation of the original phrase Ce n'est pas une pipe is that it reflects on what is the actual thing versus what is the representation of the thing. It is very interesting to apply the same metaphor to a lens because a lens of course naturally creates representations of the thing that it's capturing and is never really objective. And of course at face value at the same time, here is the lens itself and this is only written on the object itself, so it's not really a representation in, contra in contrast to the original pa um, um, painting that shows the pipe and then the sentence on it. And nevertheless I found this really, really interesting. The Eureka's design is a clear reference to vintage collapsible lenses, as I've mentioned before, and in my opinion is particularly well suited for film photography. Of course, you may also use it on a digital Leica M body and create re great results with it, and yet I think it really, really shines on a vintage Leica M6 body like here. Um, what is also interesting is, of course, that it is a reference to the 1950s Taylor Hobson um, design, uh, lens design, which is famous for its uh, swirly bokeh and characteristic look. And of course, I can't wait to um, take a closer look at the images and the results that this lens produces.
So what about the performance and the results? After shooting three rolls of film, I was really blown away by the classic timeless look that this lens produces. Modern vintage really fits it well, I think. You get really nice sharpness across the entire frame. You get hardly any vignetting and still you get a beautiful, pleasing bokeh. In my opinion, the lens performs particularly well in that f2 to f5.6 range. Here it really brings out its particular character, the nice bokeh it produces and so on. There are here and there some swirls in the bokeh, but not so much to be honest. I was surprised to see as little of that. I think it's a really beautiful creamy bokeh with a beautiful foreground to background transition that in particular came out here with some of the portraits that I've taken. Um, in terms of micro contrast and resolution, I would say it's the strongest at f8 to f11 probably. So if you're shooting landscapes, I would recommend to go in that direction to really bring out all the details that the lens is capable of capturing. Um, and it only has a little bit more character when shooting against the lights and deliberately producing some ghosting and flaring. Here I felt that um, it, it shows some more character, but still it's under control. Um, even when shooting without a lens hood, I felt like, okay, um, you, can, you, can do, you can do it, you get great results still, and it's not kind of overtaking your image, which sometimes happens. So here at least I found that I have some really nice flares in it when shooting against the sun. Um, the color rendering is fantastic and really elevates the film stock that you've chosen. So you, it really reproduces the same kind of colors. And of course, also the UV filter kind of helps here with all the sunlight and blue sky that I ha had here in, in the Malta situation. Um, overall, I was really reminded of my 50 millimeter Summicron, and I don't say that often in terms of its overall vintage rendering and the kind of look that it produces. For me, this is an all rounder, a timeless classic lens that is even a little bit sharper than the Summicron. And um, the Malta images show to me that is, this is a great all-rounder for taking especially street shots and portraits, but it also performs well for shooting landscapes. So it's the kind of perfect always-on travel lens that you can just um, throw on and even collapse in as a, an, an advantage in comparison to the Summicron. And then um, it, it really performs in almost any situation. And I was particularly um, pleased by the sharpness that it produces and that you get hardly any vignetting. So hands down, a great, great value proposition, a great lens for the kind of package that you get here. What about the handling and my personal impressions? The 50mm Thypog Eureka lens feels well-crafted, compact and light. The collapse mechanism is very similar in terms of the turn and expand movement to my original lights lens. So if you are used to that, it's easy to get your head around it. And in general, it's not a difficult thing to learn. You just, it just takes some, some uh, fine tuning and always carefully doing it. And then once you're used to it, it's just a an automatic movement to expand it quickly. I particularly enjoyed the stepless aperture. Um, you can imagine in combination with the Leica M body with a built-in light meter, you end up using the aperture to fine tune your exposure and maybe meter a little bit around and then find the best compromise using the stepless aperture. And of course, for people shooting it on a digital um, um, camera, it's perfect for videography as well. Um, similar to a cinema lens, the main benefit is that if you would transition from a bright scene to a darker scene, kind of moving, follow around with the camera to an indoor situation, you would be able to just steplessly open the aperture. And if you're doing it in a good way, your audience would hardly notice that. Um, so this is a really nice feature that is, I think, pretty unique for this particular lens here. Um, the images are amazing, as mentioned before, and I particularly appreciate the versatility and that it really lives up to my always-on 50mm Summicron lens. I particularly liked uh, using it for portraits um, because of the creamy bokeh that it produces, but it can also, um, it really performs nicely for street shots, landscape shots and all other purposes. 
the lens has character in my opinion and especially in combination with film the Eureka shines I would always recommend going in that direction um, and of course one could argue why not go for a classic vintage like a thread mount um, lens I, I get that and I have my cupboard full of those as well and I appreciate both I certainly see that this lens has a reason to be so to speak um, and I uh, there is a market for it because if you think of it if today you would hunt down um, uh, like a thread mount lens you have all these typical problems of looking for one that is in great condition that doesn't feature any fogging or fungus or was maybe not well treated by a previous owner and here you get the same kind of beautiful look and feel of the lens and even a traditional lens design that is then optimized for ensuring modern sharpness but you still have all the benefits of a collapsible lens and so on and yet you have a new a brand new lens coming from a modern production line and it and you are the very first owner of this lens and I see some benefits to that too so it really comes down to your personal preferences and taste but getting such a lens that it's so well coded and produces such nice colors is of course a difference to just hunting for a vintage lens and then potentially being a little bit disappointed so it really is a matter of of what, what is your preference and which direction you want to go. What I also liked about this particular lens is that it comes with this um, UV filter and the lens hood that are just a very nice touch and there are a lot of other small details that I just appreciated in terms of the manufacturing quality um, that really are to the highest standards at least here for the pre-production brass version that I have and what I also liked are the small details on the typography like little elements little letter letters here on the eureka and so on that overall gives this lens a premium look and feel and touch and it's certainly not a cheap product in many ways but really produced to the highest standards and you know me i appreciate every manufacturer hitting the market for like a m mount lenses it's an the mount is 70 years old so it's really surprising that there are still manufacturing go manufacturers like Thaipok going all in here and trying to cater to the needs of Leica M mount shooters and I particularly like the concept that they have that they try to really introduce true innovation um, with the Samara line of lenses for um, yeah up-to-date um, Leica M shooters um, shooting on digital cameras and so on but they're also trying to cater to the tradition using the Eureka line here and to people like myself shooting um, Leica M vintage lenses uh, le le vintage M cameras um, from the 1980s 70s and 60s and so on and combining those with such a modern lens can be really really nice so kudos to the manufacturer and for this particular lens i can only say this is a true value proposition a great lens for the money and it really really lives up to the expectations that i had So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and my review of the 50mm f2 Thipoc Eureka lens. A fantastic lens that combines a vintage look and feel with a collapsible mechanism and a beautiful modern sharpness, creamy bokeh and overall look that is really, really nice. A fantastic versatile lens that nicely complements my lens collection and that I can see myself using especially for creamy bokeh portraits and all sorts of city trips so um, a really nice lens overall hands down a great all-rounder that i can highly highly recommend if you enjoyed this episode please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends and if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe to our channel jules greg and i really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way so thanks for watching i hope to see you soon bye <laughs>